Good evening. My name is uh, Norman Austin, and I'm coming to you from Kingsway International. Um, today, we're, we're here to talk about the Fatherhood Series. Um, the Fatherhood Series is what we're talking about great men and those young men who became great men. So today's topic is evolution of a man. We're talking about young boys who became great young men, who became great men, now they're great fathers. So today we'll be talking to some of the young men that I, I mentored um, a couple years ago. We're, we're, we're coming, we'll tell you about how, how it is in life and, and what they've been through and how is it to be a father now? Can they, they look back to when they were young men and see how they were there? And did that influence the way that they are fathers now? But before we start, we're going to pray in real, class, uh, real fast. Let's just bow our heads for a minute. Father, we thank you, Father, Lord. Lord, we come as we come, Lord. We ask you to watch over these young men, Father, and everybody that's been here, God. God, give us just insight on what you need us to say, God. We thank you, we praise you, and we honor you. Amen. Amen. So we're going to start off by allowing you young men to introduce yourselves. Um, Mr. Solomon, you can introduce yourself first. Um, yes, my name is Tevin Solomon. Anything else you want me to say besides my name? Yeah, you can say where you're from and things like that. So my name is Tevin Solomon again, for y'all that don't know me. Um, I'm from Camden, New Jersey. Um, I've known, I've been known for several years, so I'm just here to be able to share my wisdom and what I learned, and you know, hopefully it helps somebody else. Mr. Dave Hill. How you doing? I'm, my name is Dave Hill, Jr., from Camden, born and raised. Um, I've known I've known Uncle Norman for about I might as well say all my life. He's been around since I was a little kid. Um, just here here to hopefully hopefully reach someone who needs to hear the things that we'll be talking about. All right. So I'm gonna throw a question out there, and you both can answer this question. Uh, Mr. Hill, Mr. David Hill, we're going to start off with you with the first question. And it was, the question is, how was it growing up with a father in your life? Um, it was, it was, it was pretty, it was pretty good. Um, my dad, my dad, he, he's always around. He, um, he worked a lot too as well, but he would, he would, you know, pick me up, take me out to do things. Um, you know, just, just be there for me when everyone else did everyone else didn't know that I needed somebody around he would he would just pop up and you know oh I was thinking about you let's let's go out let's let's go out to eat let's go out let's go out and just have a talk and it was you know that 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 was that was really helpful for me he also you know he also like gave me the mindset to always work hard and and don't and don't stop working hard right Mr. Tevin. Yes, sir. Same question to you, sir. Um, actually, I had more of uh, father figure, figures in my life. I want to actually say my father was there because it was more like me and my brothers and siblings and my mom most of our time. Um, my dad was incarcerated most of my life growing up so I had to lean on a lot of uncles and um uh father um father-in-laws and things like that um well godfather my bad so it was it was tough it was very tough you know it was what, eight of us in the house so it was, it was rough, you know. But when he did come around, around my high school years, i say about when I was about 16, 17, it started getting much better for me, you know. Growing up from 
a child to like my teenage years is pretty rough. So, so a lot of other people. So there was a time that he wasn't there, but you still had other men that picked up the slack that um your dad didn't have at that time. Yes, sir. All right. So we go to the next question. The next question is: Do you feel that your father prepared you for your life where you are grown when you grew up? Um, um, for me, for me, I want to say, uh, yes and no. Um, he prepared me as far as the working mindset and to, he, he basically taught me, taught me to never, to never not want to work and never stop working because you might come to a time where you get you get um you get tired and just be like oh well you know what I ain't going to work or you know what I don't feel like working anymore you just give up but um you know I, my dad even to this day he constantly he constantly works he constantly works yeah all my life that's all I've seen him do is work 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 so he kind of he kind of like I kind of he kind of instilled that mindset for me to always work. Like even even when when I'm when I I'm tired and down and out, to just to always work and and don't and never give up your your job or never give up wanting to work. Excuse me, never give up wanting to work. Um, and being like he he didn't really like tell me anything about the streets or anything like that because. He was more focused on making sure that he that I I seen him doing like what he did as as far as working and, and not and not stopping. So so Teb, you said that um that your dad wasn't there. So until you be you know, you became in, in high school. So is there a, did you pattern your life now in the way that you live after men who were in your life when you were younger? Actually, um, I can say yes to that, but, um, also I could say no. And the reason why I could say yes, because some of the things that they did help me out, like guide me on, I did take advice and everything. But it ain't like your actual biological dad being the one to um, put that mindset in you to uh, work hard for whatever you want, you know, not to give up, to push you and everything, to um, always be able to depend on that person right then and there. So the people that did help guide me, I was able to call them whenever I wanted to. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. But I always felt like it just wasn't that whole, you know, like not actually having a biological dad be the one. So it did steer me in a direction of where I'm in today. But I feel as though that if I had that home to where, you know, my father was there more, I probably would have been in an even more better place. But I appreciate the people that was there for me when I needed them, because I could have been in worse places. So All right. that's kind of where I'm at. All right. So Dave, let me let me ask you a question. Um, your father was there when you were younger, and, and I know you had a lot of friends. So what was the challenge of you having a father towards those that didn't have a father? Do you think that you you were you had a, a better bringing up? because of your father being in your life or it wasn't good because he wasn't there all the time? Um, I, I don't, well, I never like, you know, thought that I was better because I, because my dad was around. Um, I always, like, I always wanted to, like with my friends, I all, the ones who didn't have fathers, I never like looked down on them or, thought I was better than because my dad um, it, it made me it made me more so embrace my friend. Mm. It made me more more so embrace my friends because um 
they, I, I, I know that I know what they, they went through. Um, you know, like I said, my dad worked a lot. So the times that he wasn't around, you know, it was, you know, I, I, I understood that. And I kind of like felt like being at, like my friends, my friends that didn't have their father around, um, I know what they went through and I know how it felt. And I just kind of, you know, let them know that even at a young age that I'm that I'm there for them. I'll always be there for them as a as a big brother or how however you want to look at it. Um, and it it gave me it gave me strong strong friendships, and and I built strong friendships and strong bonds with the close friends that I have, um, especially with like especially with like Tevin. Me and Tev, me and Tev, like once, once I like we met and we got cool, and we we built that bond, and we built that bond. Um, it that's that's my brother. That's it, okay. yeah, there's no no other way around it. That's my brother, and he know like he if I can I can call Tevin, and if I need something he he he'll be like no problem. He called me. It's the same thing, and I mean, and we've been friends for. Whew, since high since okay. what high school and it's like it's like that like that's one that's actually probably he's probably my my one friend that I can say never ever switched up since the day I met him. All right. So I got I got a personal question for you. Um you know I, I we were in your life so there was times that I had to get on you because some things that when we were growing up I didn't think that that it was right. So, yeah. but I wasn't your father. So yeah. how did it feel to you that I got on you? Because I just say when I got on you, I got on you as a son, but I don't know how that did that, that help you? Or I know sometimes you were mad at me. It was okay. It was okay because I had to say to you what I had yeah. to say so that you could go the right way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, being young and when you would get on me and stuff and it'd be like, oh well, why he coming why he always coming at me? Why he always why he always it seemed like he was picking on me, but it was like at the same time, you know, especially being the you I mean, not like knowing my mom and the way I was brought up, it was just like, no, he's he's doing this for a positive reason. He's doing this to keep you on a straight and narrow path. Because I mean you you know my story. So it's like I I, I took it in. I took it in and then, you know, having, having my friends around me as well, like not saying that they looked up to me, but you, you and Aunt Tiff, like you guys, you guys, um, you guys, so you guys knew that I can be a, a positive figure to, to not only younger kids and younger generations, but my friends as well, because of my story, because of what I went, excuse me, because of what I went through. So it's like, it, it was, it was, it was a tough journey. Yeah, like I said, yeah, I would be upset sometimes, but at the same time, knowing like knowing my past and knowing what I went through, it was more so like I took it in because a lot of my friends and like a lot of my friends didn't know what really happened to me. Um, I've lost, I've lost teammates, football teammates. I lost um, high school friends to to senseless to senseless things, senseless acts of acts of violence. Because they didn't have that person to to get on them, and and jump and jump on them and be like, "Yo, stop doing, stop acting stupid, or stop doing this and stop doing that." You know, you know, you better than that. They didn't have nobody to do that. So I'm I'm definitely grateful and thankful that you you and Aunt Tiff were there to to get on me like that when y'all knew that I should be doing better. All right, all right. We have Ted. Before I get to you, we got a um, special guest here today. My pastor. Um, Pastor, uh, Pastor Spencer Rogers, is there anything that you'd like to say? He's on mute right now. I know he's he's gonna come <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm. How you doing? I'm I'm off of mute, but uh, with the grandkids uh, doing different things, uh, I can't guarantee that it'll be quiet. <laughs> That's why I'm on mute. <laughs> how, uh, it's uh, Dave and uh, Tevin. How you doing, brothers? All right. All right, man. How about yourself? Good, good, good. I wanted to uh, be on just to hear a little bit about your uh, story. And, um, of course, being, um, uh, if, if I might, Norm, 
Uh, my own journey was, uh, I was raised with a stepfather who was in the home, uh, but was distant and absent in the home. And mm -hmm. years, as we grew, I asked, well, dad, you know, why were you, why were you so distant? And he said, because I thought that your real father one day was going to come and take you. So his way of handling that was to kind of stay at, at arm's length, which as a young man, you know, you're just, you're just looking for love. You're looking for encouragement. You're looking for, for a role model. You're looking for so many things. And uh, so I had to kind of figure stuff out by myself. Unfortunately, I had some teachers who took an interest. Um, others, uh, other men in the community, particularly from church, who would kind of gather us, all the kids up, and they would take us to ice cream places. Uh, they would, you know, I mean, I went from back in the 60s listening to Stokely Carmichael, Black Power, you know, Radical, uh, to, you know, we all were still in the church, but they got saved, and we got saved, and that it was Jesus, you know, and then we get radical for Jesus, <laughs> you know, and uh, still, though, trying to figure out, even through adulthood, trying to figure out what it meant to be a dad and a, and a father and have desire to be a great dad. And, uh, and I think we did very well raising uh, three kids who are now adults and one has children, three children, but there's still things, still injuries, still uh, stuff that if you don't get over, you carry into adult life, you carry into father life. And so it's very important for us to come to know the word of God and to get around other men to not just share our past because the past doesn't develop our future. Right. We, we have to recognize our past, overcome our pain and disillusionment to create a new future for ourselves and for our families so that they have the opportunity to push into their generation a new legacy in their generation. So that's what my mind is occupied today. And I wanted to support Norm uh, as he's just reaching out to, to fathers and I understand you guys are, are fathers and I wanna commend you for uh, seeking to do a good work and seeking to raise and be, be engaged with your kids and you become the role model for the future of what they will become. Yeah. All right. Tab, getting to you, so the same question that we gave Dave. Uh, I know you're ready. <laughs> Actually, I need you to read that question back to me. I can't even remember the question. In, in your life, growing up, I was, I was one of your mentors. So okay. when, I, when I got on you, when, when them tough days when you did things and I, I jumped on your case, um, one thing that always sticks out is, and I still hold you on to, is um, – Cam High not winning the championship. Um, uh, uh, because of you. So, <laughs> nah, but really, uh, those days that, <laughs> wow. that talk, we talked about it. So, how did it influence you? Um, well, when you put it like that, um, <laughs> a lot of the times when you got on me, um, I never took it in a bad way because half the time I knew what I was doing was wrong anyway. You know, me being young, being a teenager, you know, just trying to have fun. Sometimes we mistake the bad things for fun stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Things to do. And um, that was like a time in my life so I all I just always took whatever you told me. I would be probably upset at the moment, probably feel embarrassed at the moment. But when I always thought about it, it was just like it's just nothing but love. That's all it is. Just love and just trying to guide in the right direction. So I was never fully upset or mad about anything. I actually took it in because they were they was always like lesson learned. So. Um, I appreciate you. Uh, you're on your mic. Your mic's off. There you go. You hear me? Yeah, I can now. All uh, right. Apologies. Phone call came in. <laughs> um, so, 
I appreciate all of it, like all of it. It, it helps. It helped me through a lot of stuff, you know. Could have made me second think, like second think of the things that I was going to do. So I had to make sure I always thought about my actions before actually committing those actions. So um, it was never, it was never no problem. All right. Um, one thing I know that we did a lot that a lot of people used to get on you guys for was going to church. Oh, you going to church again? And, and because you guys were so cool because you, you were the, in the in crowd, but it was like that we made time to go to church and you made time to go to church. So how did that affect your, 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 your teenage years when you were trying to be cool, but you still had God in your life? And I know people were talking about you. Oh, you going to church, especially you, Dave. You know, so let me hear about that, your spiritual life. <laughs> um, me or Dave? We can start with Dave. Go ahead, Dave. You're smiling on this one. <laughs> Can't hear you. You froze. Can't hear you. Hello. All right, go ahead now. We can. Y'all hear me? Yeah. All right. Um, what was you? you know, I couldn't really hear you because it was it was um. It was your spiritual life. How was you? Yeah. You know, as a, a young man coming up, you know the times that I made you come to church. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's talk a little oh, bit about that. How did you feel about <laughs> that? Oh yeah. Well, well, you know, for me, like, cause I, you know, I hung with. One coming in from 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 middle school and hanging with hanging with all the cool kids and the track stars and football players and stuff, and then it was like Mike called him. All these phone calls. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Hello. Can y'all hear me better now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, just you know, just hang, you know, hanging with them, and then going to church and everything. And they like, oh, why are you going to church? Why you, why you wanna, why are you going to church when we can be going to a party or or hanging out with the girls and this, 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 and this. And it was just like more so like I wanted to, I didn't want to do that. Like I wanted to, I wanted to get away from, get away from that and build my my relationship with. Hold on. And build my relationship with, uh, <laughs> and build my relationship, like get my relationship with church a little more. Um, I, okay, I grown up, I grown grew up in into church and everything, but it was like once I got to my middle school years and in high school year, well, my beginning of high school year, I kind of like shied away from it. And then when I met when I met Uncle Norm, it was just like, well, not met him, but once I once he he got back into my life it was more so like oh well you know i want my football players to to come to church i want my football players to 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 be able to pray and a lot of a lot of my teammates and everything they was kind of like not with it but me i wanted to like i wanted to get into that because you know it's it's it comes times when you need prayer it comes times when someone might need prayer and you know they might come to you for it and to to be able to help them in their time of need is something that I always wanted to like learn how to like learn how to do. And even to this day, like I might have a friend call me and you know tell me how they're going through something and really need prayer. And I can say like from my past, well from my, my younger ages, learn going to church and, and building my connection with God help me helps me help them. I remember one miracle that that happened. I remember that you had an argument with a with a young man, and he was in what they call the gangs, and he jumped out on you. And can you tell us about that when he jumped out on you and he fired on you and he was standing less than a foot from you and no bullets hit you? Yeah. Um. You know it's not. Um. Yeah. Um. You know when I was. I, I 
got into an argument or a dispute, fought the guy. Um, he didn't he he didn't take the loss well, so he his his mindset was to retaliate. Um, and he saw me walking from school, going home, and it was a pretty far walk from Parkside to Fairview. And he saw me, he saw me walking. He was with his boys in a car. He jumped out and shot at me five times. Now one bullet hit me. So, you know, that was kind of a wake up call for me from, oh, stop, stop fighting. Stop, stop getting into arguments. Stop doing this and stop doing that. And, you know, get yourself together and get into church. All right, Ted. <laughs> Ask me that same question. Yeah, same question. <sighs> All right. <laughs> you laugh. <laughs> you do that. I actually like this question. Um, growing up, I can't, I'm not even gonna lie. Um, when I used to go to church with my grandma, younger, I used to always fall asleep. Like it was, it was always me falling. She used to always tap me, smack me, wake up, boy, you better get up, you know. So I always, always thought of it just being a time to nap until I got older. And when I met Uncle Nor, and I was invited to come to uh, Little Rock, and. I was I was like, uh, because I wanted to, you know, be with my friends. I wanted to make music. I want to rap. You know, I want to do all this other stuff. So I'm like, eh, I don't really want to go to no church. It's, you know, it's a waste of time. It's taken away. Plus, all they're going to do is laugh at me and all those things. And I remember... Um, I believe it was like the uh, uh, choir rehearsal or something that that brought me in. I know it was something we had there that brought me in for the first time, and I was there, and it was it was just so much fun. Like I had so much fun to the point um, I love going, joining the choir, singing have the uh rehearsal nice bible study and everything and it was like after that it was like i didn't care what people thought because mm -hmm. i felt closer to god and it's like when you get to that point where you just love praising god and worshiping him it's like what everybody else thinks it doesn't matter you know and all my friends, they started understanding after a while because they saw that my rapping music turned into gospel music. And they actually loved the songs I did make that was gospel music. And it kind of turned them um, a different way. So when I seen that, it was just like, all this started from not wanting to go and it's just like God just showed me a different path in this different way and when he linked me up with you it was just like it was meant like it was just it was like it was destiny to me so um through all that it's like it was it was it was the best for me so I have nothing, nothing bad to ever say about it because it's, it's, it's beautiful memories. All right, that's good. So those things that we, we, we went through when, when we were younger, how has that allowed you to be a, a great father now? Because now you're both fathers. And so the things that happened to you growing up, tell me about what makes, what, what do you use to make you be a great father now? Either one of you. All right, I'll go. Um, all that that I went through, I kind of, I use all of it because I use the bad to show my kids that 
this a path you don't want to go. So it, I kind of use that. Can't hear you. There you go. You hear me? I can't hear you now. All right. So I use the bad as a guide for them to let them know, like, I've been here and there, so you don't have to, you know, take that route because the outcomes is obviously going to be this or that. The good, I also show because um, even though I'm I'm in my uh, kid's life, so as a father and all the stuff I learned growing up that I used to be the man that I am today, I teach them with that, but I also try to do more even though it's like it's like a project for me because I'm using what I learned and not having my father in my life, my whole life, it's kind of, it just felt like a hard job for me. Being a father for the first time, being confused and not knowing what to do. But it's like I took certain tools that I did learn and I put into like this one big pot and I just stirred it all up into these good tools to use. So I, um... I just I just pray and just hope that as they get older, all these tools that I teach them, all the things that I show them, all the knowledge that I give them, that they actually take it in consideration, they actually use, you know, as they get older and things like that. And I always um, make sure that they can always come to me no matter what. You know, you always come to your father. You can talk to me about anything. Um, you don't never have to lie to me, whatever. Like, Honesty is, is the key to everything. So that's 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 just what I do. It's all right, Dave. Um, I kind of I said I had one. Give me a second. I kind of I kind of um I kind of like it kind of helped me like with my with my kids to let them know like let them know that they can always. They don't have to. They don't have to hide anything, and they can always come to their parents instead of keeping it to themselves. Because it's a, it's a, it comes a time when you might, you might come to a point where you are upset and you need somebody to talk to, but you don't want to tell nobody. To so never be afraid to express yourself and and talk to your parents because they'll always be there, no matter what. Pastor, is there anything you like to say on this point right here? Uh, which which point? The the um, of being being a a, a father. So we were we we're talking about their their fathers now. And they they grew up from young men. Now they're their own fathers. So, mm -hmm. what what's the difference that allows them to to be a father? What did they learn to make them be great fathers now? Mm -hmm. Well, I would I would just uh, encourage you to, uh, as dads, uh, have a mindset that you are very, very important in your kids' lives and that you are very influential in your kids' lives. Uh, men in general don't get a whole lot of respect, but the statistics tell us the importance of a man with the, being engaged with his kids and consistency. If you just, just work on and just continue to be consistent consistent in the truth, consistent with your love, consistent with your presence, uh, all of those things, you know, a lot of times the things that we didn't have, if we do those things and just keep pressing on, you're going to find that, that we go a little further. And I think it was Dave who mentioned, um, you know, sometimes you look back and you see, you know, dads and you realize some of the things that they were going through. And when you become a dad, you become more empathetic you know you you feel you kind of understand that uh, it's not easy and uh, so we can forgive more and at the same time we want more for our kids than and for them to go further than what we have gone so I just want to encourage you to keep pressing on keep being consistent uh, keep being truthful you know um, you know sometimes we act like especially when we're in church you know like we, we never came from anywhere you know just be truthful with them, age appropriate, you know, for their age, 
but just right. be real with them. And as they're real and you love them, you discipline them, but you love them deeply. And that's what they desire is to be loved, is to have boundaries. That's not a free for all, do whatever you want. And just be nice to your kids, man. Just love on them. And when we do that, uh, we have a great fighting chance for God to take them and use them <laughs> in different ways. So hearing about you guys uh, journey and uh, uh, hope you make some real influence for now and for the next generation. Uh -huh. So we're, we're, again, we're, we're kingdom uh, ways international. Kings, I, uh, here I go, Kingsway International. Sorry about what I said wrong. But the thing is that we're talking about great men, you know, young boys who turned into great men who now are, are great fathers. And and I can say for myself that these two young men are are, are great men. Um, there was things that put were put in front of them when they were younger, and they kept going. They kept persevering. They they went through. Now they sit here. They're 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 great men. They're taking care of their their families um, as men. They 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 know what the responsibility is for them to be a man. And I'm glad that they allowed me to to be in their life um, because. It was my 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 turn to to speak into their lives when we were younger. Now they're speaking into other young men's lives. So it's it's a it's a line, it's a train. So once you learn and you do, when you get older, then you do the same thing. And if we keep speaking into men's life, men are going to be great. We're already great, but we will recognize who we are and what power we have. Um, not just men, but godly men also, because there's the, 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 the spirit that's inside of it is, is mighty. So in order for us to, to do what we need to do as men, there's different things that, that we have to do. So again, I thank you for coming on here and, and sharing um, about being a father. So there's one other thing I want to tell you that on June 13th, I'm at 7 p.m., We'll have fathers on who were stepfathers. They'll be coming on um, next week. So they're talking about the life of being a, a stepfather, a great man that's a stepfather. And then after that, on June 20th, we'll actually have more men on here talking about what it is to, to be a, a, a father, what it is to be honored as a father. And these are great things because we have to realize that Men have to be respected. Sometimes we don't really get the respect that, that we do, but because of, we, because of who we are, we keep going. Also, there's a challenge, and it's, it's called the Fatherhood Serious Challenge. And what that is is people giving, doing videos, 30-second video, telling how great your father was or what you think of your father in a great way. So hashtag fatherhood serious challenge. You can send that um, to Kingsway. You can send that to Kingsway International, um, I-N-T-L-7 at gmail.com. And the, the video, you can send the video in. And on the 20th, we'll be, we'll be playing all those videos just letting people in, in the world know how great your father was. It takes, it takes great men to help this kingdom. So again, I thank uh, Pastor Spencer. I thank Tevin Solomon, Dave Hill, AK, should I say you? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just want you young men to know that um, I'm proud of you. I'm proud because I've seen how far you've come. And, and when life had you down, you didn't lay down. You got back up. Uh, I, I didn't Definitely. push Definitely. Uh, God on you, but I, I introduced you to who he is. And yes. to this day, he's still with you. So you're yes. always in my prayers. I mean, we're in plays and things together. So you're always, in, you know, one phone call away. Kevin, I Definitely. seen you the other day. But <laughs> Dave, you're 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 part of us, 
you know, you're my family and, and I just, I, I love your spirit and, and I love the men that, that you become, you know? Boogie, you. you know how it is. <laughs> oh, you know, I had to get that out, Dave. I had to get that out. Because that's who yeah. you used to be. Yeah. You used yeah. to always talk about football and running touchdowns as Booby Miles. And, and, <laughs> you became a great man in, in the midst. Yeah, so, definitely. Definitely. Uh, I, uh, I, I just want you to tell everybody about this Father Series and it, they, they can come on and, and if there's something that they want to talk about, you know, shoot a, uh, what is it, a chat on the chat line. Um, is there anything you guys like to say before we get off of here? Uh, yeah, for me, um, to those, to those young, young men that might be listening, don't be afraid to get into church and, and be active into the church. Um, I know now, like, they make, they make it, well, I'm not going to say they, life makes it, you know, harder for young, for young men to get into church and be active because you have so many type, so many different types of responses, negative responses that you might receive from your, your friends or um, just, just anybody in general outside, like in, in the outside world. Um, I know for me growing up, I, it happened to me, um, a lot of my friends, some of my friends, well, that I thought were my friends or just people, period, out in the outside world made fun of me because I'd rather be in church than be in parties. I'd rather praise dance than, than be out running, running the streets. So, you know, I, at first I was kind of like, oh, no, nah, I think I'm going to just drop all of this. But then it was more so like I'm not going to be afraid to give God my praise. So... Don't don't be afraid to to join to get into church and and be active into church. That's all I want to say. Right. Can't fool you again. They've <laughs> 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 <Have> always froze. So we're going to end it here. Yes. Oh, there you go, Tef. Trying to get Tevin back. Oh, there we go. Um, y'all hear me? Yeah. 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 All right. Um. I just want to go off um, a little bit of what Dave said. Um, so don't be scared to take on responsibilities because a lot of young guys, they become fathers early. And at those type of situations, it, it becomes more of worrying about the fun stopping and the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the friends clowning and messing with them type situations. And to those kind of men there, I want to say take on responsibility. Um, life is life. You're, you're going to live it regardless. The fun is still going to be there because it's with your children or your child. It becomes a different journey for you, uh, another lesson for you. And a lot of, a lot of young men be scared of that because they think that that right there is going to stop everything. They ain't going to be able to have fun. They ain't going to be able to go chill out with their friends and, you know, do a lot of things. And a lot of friends are there, you know, they don't have kids, so, you know, they clown or whatever. So to those guys, I just want to say just just take on responsibilities. Just be a man at home. Just have faith in God. That's all. Pray on it and be a father. That's that's basically all I want to say on that. All right, then. So, again, I thank you guys for coming on here. Um, Pastor, you have a closing? Anything close with or? Yeah, just a quick encouragement that has helped me along the way. Um, discovered it years later, is that as a father, 
we have to be fathered by the <laughs> ultimate father and know that you are you're never alone that you always have a father that you can go to who will guide you who will lead you who will help you to model out what fathering looks like for you with your child and and it changes from when they're small and young to as they develop to the teenage years and even uh, the blessing of fathering uh, when you're adults and they're adults. And uh, so I know that I'm never alone. You're never alone. We have a father who fathers us. And that's the best thing that I can leave you with. Right. Thank you. All right. Well, folks, uh, I guess this is it. Um, yeah. I'll talk to you guys later. Um, All right now. Nice right, to meet you. Brothers. Always bullying, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you too, man. I appreciate you. All right. Peace out. Peace. Peace. Bye. See you. <laughs>